Amp X is all the best guitar amps ever made. All your favorite effects and cabinets. Fully programmable with lots of combinations. Fully analog amps and effects, plus the best of digital. And X. Hey, welcome to Academy of Tone 109 from Los Angeles. Yes, we're, we're live from we're LA. From LA, yeah. Unfortunately, our internet in this apartment is not stable enough. So we are pre-recording this thing, but we will be live in the chat so we can still communicate. And this is MX, it's here. This is the baby and finally um, yeah, we can see it all live at NAMM and in person um, I will show some things. It's not fi uh, fully completed, there's a, a bunch, tons of things that are not finished, but the message for me is, hey, there's a show and we show it. And it puts a lot of pressure on our team, so you know, boop, boop, let's finish for the show and it's good. It's kind of an internal message. Uh, on one side and on the other side is a message to you guys that the study that we showed two years ago is actually happening one day. Yeah, I was going to say it marks the end of the next stage of the journey. Yeah, and um, as we probably all know, this thing is super complex and it's a long journey and the journey will still continue for a bit. So don't expect that we put this into boxes and ship it next week. We have a plan for that. Um, but for me, it's important to show the Amp X is really happening before it's becoming this kind of phantom that nobody has ever seen, you know? Phantomas, my nickname <laughs> <laughs> for this one. Um, yeah, maybe let's let's have a, a, you have the GoPro here. I do. Yeah. So um, we can get some close-ups while you explain stuff. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Actually, for the recording, we are using the headphones out um, um, and we have connected our little studio speaker in this corner um, for the monitor so we can listen to the different kind of speaker emulations, the blue boxes um, that's coming from our monitor speaker here. Mm -hmm. On the other side, there's the master that is connected to a the speaker between the two of us, which is a future product as well. It's a black lacquered tweed um, cabinet. Let's with with this kind of you know traditional handle. 
Um, and this is the amp X as it looks uh, when it's not lighting up and it has this flap that protects the knobs when it's not used. There's minor tweaks we have to do on the flap as well, but um, this is the concept. So you have kind of two modes. One is when the flap is open, you can access all the features and uh, kind of make your program, save the program to so the foot switches. And when you are actually on stage, you should close the flap and just deal with the knobs that are, you know, on this lower panel here yeah. and uh, feels like a regular amp. And that's, to me, the important thing that this amp is made to be both. One aspect is it's being used on stage with the flap closed and the other side is... Mm. We have bikes in the neighborhood, maybe you can hear them. Um, anyway, so there's a, a live um, kind of mode with the flap closed and there's kind of a studio mode uh, where the flap is open and then you can twiddle with the knobs. I, I, I always feel a little bit um, distracted when I see too many knobs, so I try to reduce this and um, this is the way it, it goes. And also we have functionalities like when the flap is closed in the live mode we can have the tone control as uh, like a master tone control over all the presets so you can adjust to the sound in the live situation um, when it's closed so you don't have to to dial in all the details on each individual sound so just have you know one change that affects all the, the sounds so th yeah these are like master controls yeah uh, and these are more controls that people who are familiar with the amp ones will be more familiar yeah. with right yeah yeah because amp one it, it it is not as extreme like on the amp one because we only want to have small adjustments but um if if the there's a mode where the flap actually has a switch that tells the amp it's open and now it's in the amp mode. So this will change only the, the, the tone on this particular amp that is chosen. You know, all these kind of things. Um, yeah, we are about to implement into the unit and maybe you can see there's a USB-C port here or we can maybe move over to the other amp. Um, the USB-C is to update, to, to load uh, new sounds and new firmware and stuff. Um, and, you know, I just put this over here and I'll show you with the other unit. Um, there's an aux in, uh, yeah, okay. Um, here's the USB, maybe we can see that one. Yeah. Um, we will have USB-C to A adapter so you can upload stuff from your USB B stick, your st standard USB stick. On the other hand, um, it gives us more options. Ah, here we have some things like that. And this goes in here and then you can simply upload it. And the adapter comes with the Ampex in the box, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is um, our plan. I hope we, we find some nice ones. We have a short one that actually can be left inside um, and the flap being closed. So. It, um, let's see what we can source, what, what we can offer to you. And so what would be the main uses for the guys with the USB? Well, I mean, besides backup and stuff, it's a way how to, to load in new sounds. And we have uh, the option to get audio out of that as well. Anyway, in, in general, the USB is our interface into the digital world. Yeah. And AmpX is about being, you know, a lot of things from the analog world and the digital world. Um, the, the concept, again, is I grew up with the good old tube amps. And we have the nanotube here. We have our analog amps, which is kind of the center of the universe of a guitar amp system. And this is now 100 watts. Well, actually, it does a lot more, but I call it 100 watts nanotube because it has the headroom. It's like too loud if you, if you need that. But 
to have all the headroom, we can kind of get any amp, power amp behavior into this machine. And we can scale it down to whatever, 0 0.5 watt or it doesn't matter anymore. It's, it's just a parameter in, on our blank canvas that we can put in and make this thing a 5 watt amp or a 100 watt amp or a 100 watt amp that has a lot of sagging like Jimi Hendrix's amp or that has a very tight low, low end for metal and it has even 150 watts, like pfft, tight. It, this is all possible. Um, what I find e exceptional with this concept is that we also have uh, analog boost and drive pedals. And these can be um, like, it's not one boost, it can be several boosts, you know, like this is a, there's, there's a, yeah, there's, there's several boost pedals here, I show you. So the, the concept behind the boost pedals is you have your basic amp tone and the boosts that are built into the amp X are similar to external boost pedals that we all know and use. Yeah. And they're built into the amplifier. Yeah. Yeah. For instance, I just recalled the boost and now it's going all over the place. And it can also be a compressor. Without the boost, added boost. And there's a boost control, so we have a lot of features. Ah, talking about controls, um, like this boost has a tone and a level and kind of a drive, which is the boost knob. And there's a power drive for the power amp stage, which gives you uh, a different behavior of the amp model that you chose. Yeah. And these features are kind of always directly accessible. And power drive, we have a new name, it's not called power um, soak anymore because what you actually want is the sound of a driven high power driven amplifier where the power is cranked so this is why I call it power drive because what is a power soak it soaks the power so you can make the amp louder but then you deduct the volume and then it, you know this is old cool thinking in the end, you just want the tone independent from the volume. And this control will be able to give you a power drive feel. It's like, how does my amp sound on a low master volume and on a high master volume? Yeah, exactly. So power drive is like you're pushing the amp more, but at any volume level that yeah. you want. Yeah. yeah. So the power drive is volume, almost volume independent. And the master volume is your master volume. Yeah. So which is volume. And then independent of from that we have the outputs uh, for the recording outs that's also different from uh, amp one so this master volume is for the the speaker output only and the recording out is kind of fixed with the preset so we have a few more options here uh, in case you want to combine that since this is all software control, it would be possible. So at this point, we, we are still about to implement the basics of what's needed. We have a show and it's here, it's, it's alive, it's not finished, um, but yeah, it does, it does a lot. Maybe, um, I can show you a few more things. Ah, let me let me show you um, the delay. So this is a delay. I, I have to decide if this is a post delay or pre delay, and it is a pre delay. So is the delay button flashing there at the tempo of the repeats? Well, actually, it will be flashing at the temp tap tempo switch, which is this one at the moment, and all the switches can be freely assigned to be like presets or to be like. 
uh, special functions like tap tempo and um, I thought of a system to have like two presets on one button which is like blue is the standard preset and you, if, you, if you hit it again and there's kind of a, a brighter blue that gives you a second preset on the same switch. Yeah. Um, it's something that I stole a little bit from the, the Roland pedals. They only do it with effects though. So they have a clean sound, for instance, and then your second sound on the same switch has clean end chorus, for yeah. instance. Um, in our case, we will have complete preset options there. So you can do the same thing, having a clean sound and a clean sound with a chorus on the, on the second hit of the same button. But you could also go and have something totally different, yeah. which means you, it's in your um, responsibility what you're doing with it. You can do a lot of scheiße with it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got one more question about the knobs on the front. And yeah. I think this is another one that a lot of AMP1 people will yeah. We'll have we've got the the four-way selector switch here, yeah clean vintage classic yeah and modern as everyone will know from the channels on the mercury and the iridium yeah what does that do on the amp x because you, you've been telling us that the amp x it's not a four channel amp is it yeah so i mean maybe i have to make this clear again this is a brand new concept and it's actually it's kind of a one channel amp that is so flexible that any part of this one channel can be tweaked into, let's say from, let, let's start with a Tweet amp. What is a my 57 Fender Tweet Deluxe? Well, it is, it is a very simple amp. It has nearly nothing. It has a volume, it has two inputs. So we have an input module on the amp X as well. Um, that's kind of a way to deal with this esoteric things, but it, they, are imp they are important. And so what, what, is this, what is this Tweet amp? Well, it's a very natural flat amp. There's not much frequency treatment of any kind. Straight in, straight out, speaker, volume, and the rest is the magic of the tubes. You know, um, they have 6v6 tubes and, uh, and the way it's breaking up is, is it's depending on the amp actually. Some amps are a bit tighter because the tubes are proper biased in a way or mine, mine is, is pretty muddy in a way. I like it. And all this stuff we also can recreate with the amp X. Um, so this is one world. This amp can be totally clean. So, and this design that we have here can be totally clean and do this thing. On the other hand, what is a metal amp? A metal amp has tons of gain at the front end, has a super tight low end. So it's shitloads of frequency treatment before some gain staging and gain stages and another gain stage and EQ and blah, 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 different kind of stages that build up that rich tone that is tight. And then they have a very tight power amp section that's pretty neutral and just works with the current feedback parameter to, to have the interaction with the speaker. That's the thing that's important for a metal amp. And this kind of one channel design is so flexible that I can tweak any part in my one channel to be like the amp that I want to create or recreate. So if I want to recreate that tweet amp, I have to do, you know, I have to, 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 to understand the DNA or the cooking recipe of that amp. And in the old school years, you took that magic tube and that magic transformer and you had this magic L caps and a few capacitors here and there. And this was doing the job. The thing is, the combination of these components, they have effects. And this is what is making the sounds. What I learned in my life is this is what I'm after. The effects that's being created from these magic parts. And then recreate the effects of what's being into my amp that can do this. All analog, no latency, no conversion, period. And this gives me the same tone and feel in the end. And uh, yeah, 
At this point, I, I have only a few sounds implemented on a very rough level, but you could hear already something I can show you a little bit more later. Um, but um, I, I, have tr I have tried extremes from clean to like ultra gain and in between and I'm getting there. This is, it's happening, it's possible. And that's the amp side. And then on top we have the boost and the overdrive side. So in the boost section, we also find a compressor. So um, different kind of boost, the, my range master, I have done a, a quick one with that. Um, yeah, so all the different built-in effects are kind of based on classics or pedals from your board, for example? Yeah, at, at this point, because, you know, um, this, when it, it is not at the 100% at the level where I can gig with it, because not all the pedals are in there and not all yeah. the controls are functioning the way it is. So this is my first job, so I can actually use the amp myself and make the field test with that amp and see what's happening or why it needs some whatever software improve. Um, on the hardware side, I'm, I'm pretty sure we, we, we worked on that enough and it's flexible enough. And it's the, now the, this is where we got stuck a bit here is the software because the software is so complex because there's layers of software. There's one layer that is the interface software that the user can see. And then there is a, a layer of software that controls the hardware, which is almost 50 parameters for my one channel amp. That's only the amp. And then there's a, a, a full set of uh, parameters for the boost and the drive stage, of course, and the power amp stage on top of the 50, almost 50 from the amp. And then we have all the other um, parameters that comes with the digital domain, like we have reverb, we have delays, and we have tons of other things. So it's kind of sitting in the studio with hundreds of knobs that you can tweak to make like one screenshot of one setting of the amp. And then you turn the knobs on your reference amp, for instance, and you have to come up with a full other things. And then this has to be interpolated. Mm -hmm. So it's like when you dial the knob, it should have the same reaction, like morphing from one picture to the other seamlessly without any thing. And this is what we are working on. And that actually, it sounds like it's not analog, but it's very important to stress, isn't it, that this is an analog amplifier? Yeah. Because this comment and question keeps coming over and over and over again. Exactly. It's all analog amplifier, all analog pre-effects. We are talking about input, wah, wah. We are talking about the, the, the boost stage that also offers compression or a compressor. And we talk about drive stage. So then the amp and of course the power amp stage. So guitar into speaker, all analog, no latency. Similar to Amp 1, so if you are familiar with an Amp 1, this thing feels like a real tube amp, like an Amp 1. It just has a, a lot more flexibility. And by the way, guys, if you don't need that, Amp 1 is still a cool amp. <laughs> because it's even smaller, it doesn't have all the features. Of course, now we talk about Amp X with all these whistles and bells and the flagship of the company. Um, but, uh, you know, it is kind of the next level in, in flexibility, but based on the same, it's kind of the same technology base brought to the next level. And the, and the complicated part we are, where we are right now is kind of connecting our analog part with the digital control world. And it's not like I press this one switch and it does only one switch on the, on the PCB old school style. It's like this switch. No, this goes into 
our processor and our processor, we can tell the processor what to do with it. It can do anything. It can switch off the amp if we hit the boost button. We don't want that, but we can, we can activate anything with it. Or if we turn this knob, it can change one, ten, or whatever, even those almost 50 parameters of the amp in one knob. You know, we turn this thing and a loop, by magic, the whole thing is. And this is what we call the neural uh, network technology, the neural, yeah, it's, it's, it's a neural uh, control of these lots of an analog uh, co um, um, controls or th that controls these lots of analog uh, parameters within the PCB or within the, this uh, design. So, yeah, I tell you, it's, it, it has been a long journey actually. It's been um, ongoing for five years with things and that, but you know, I, I, I decided to do this NAM show for two reasons. One is we had to have, you know, a date and this was the first NAM that was hap happening after COVID and it put some pressure on us to deliver. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this made us work a few night shifts. <laughs> <laughs> you can count my Olympic rings here and there <laughs> and from other people in the company. But um, I think it's, you know, things like that need to be like, Need, need to have that, that thing. I remember when I was recording my albums, Electric Gallery, I didn't sleep for two days. I worked 48 hours because, you know, you want to finish the album and if you're not happy, you are not happy. And this is just a phase one. Um, so we had to, to, to work hard for the NAMM show and get somewhere. Not finished, but we got somewhere. And you can come to the booth and see more. Um, and then there will be another deadline and we are in the process of managing manufacturing stuff and so so we hope that everything runs smoothly we pre-ordered parts components so hopefully we don't have the neural DSP problem that we announce something and then ca can't deliver so we paid for the stuff already so it's not like let's see um, because blue guitar we have an experience about manufacturing since the guitar the, the company exists and that's probably a new thing for Neural which was a, a hard thing for them and I've done anything that I have learned in the past to avoid that but these days are crazy I mean we have we have things going on that nobody ever thought you know and uh, we have to deal with it. Um, there's a shortage of components. We have changed components to, to be able to finally get something in, into production. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we are sourcing all the stuff so, so that we are, we already started to source months ago and we hope that everything is ready, you know, later the year so we we actually are able to produce our first batches and here's one thing for the guys um, we will start in germany why because we have the amp we have a direct connection with the customer and in case we do have some issues or in case you are not happy because i try to do my best and we you know, in the in the live stream, we can also talk and share thoughts. But it's a different thing than when people actually work with the unit. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to produce a product that is not um, not at the point where it should be sold worldwide. We start slow and then build it up. So the Germans first this time. And then comes the rest of the world. Wow. Um, yeah.
Yeah, I'm. Uh, I show you one little thing, uh, or maybe I show you a, a few more sounds, and then the rest we will see in the chat what kind of questions we yeah. have. And of course, there's them. Um, there is that. But before we get to the sounds, yeah, uh, I want to twist it around yeah. and show the guys the back panel. Yeah. Let me go back to this, and you can talk the guys through what's on the on the back panel. Okay, this is the mains inlet AC from 100 to 240, and this is a new power amp design. It works just like the one from Amp One, so it's universal power. Wherever you plug this into a power outlet in in the planet on the planet, it will work. Yeah, the unlike some of the video. Equipment gear. that we brought with us and, yeah, and had we, problems with. Yeah, for for the super 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 nerdy guys, we we th this this unit is so packed with components, we had to come up with a new design that actually has an internal switch, and it's it, it detects the voltage and it switches a relay from like US to European voltage. Um, and that, that way we could reduce the size of the L caps of the power supply. So this is a new, brand new design power, power supply for the amp, yeah. which gives us even more headroom for the amp. It's, it's kind of two, two things at once, more power, still the same flexibility and smaller. So, you know, everything we do, we, we try to improve. Then we have the two outputs here, which is uh, 8 and 16 ohms, as you know them from the M1. And um, yeah, be aware that there can be tons of power, but we can limit the power of the amp. If you have a weak cabinet or a low wattage cabinet, um, you, you will be able to tame your amp. So you can go anywhere you want and the amp will not destroy your cabinet. So it, it's scalable yeah. internally. That's the fan. Um, the fan is regulated. So in normal mode, we hear a little bit of fan noise, but it's that's what we're hearing right now beside the video equipment. Um, yeah, when, when you play very loud, it speeds up, but so far, I think it's similar to amp one. Um, these are our two XLR <laughs> jackets, uh, sockets, um, and I mean, uh, the stupidest mistake ever, we used input sockets. Um, I like the idea of the combination, like uh, line level at the center and microphone level, uh, even balanced at uh, the XLR level, but um, they don't exist as output sockets. So there's one option is having the adapter or we probably change for what's so so it it's it it will be um male instead of female. Yeah. Um, and therefore we have to dip these line outs but we do have a stereo line out here that also can be used with speaker emulation. And by the way any of these outputs the speaker simulation can be applied to or switched off and ha can have its individual IR or its individual sound. So we in total we have five um, IR loaders in there and they can be put for instance on the recording out, on the line out and even on the speaker out. You know some some people might go that uh, full range flat response cabinet thing, camper style. At this point, I'm not so convinced, but you, you know, I, I wanted to be able to to give all the options. So we have five of them, and we can assign them to any of the outputs, or we can assign them all to one output and make this the mega recording out with five blue boxes. Let let's have a a vintage thirty, a greenback, and whatever speaker blend into one um, thing here, it's just one socket. Or you have a stereo spread of a Vintage 30 on one side of, uh, and a green bag on the other side or a fat cap here and blah, blah, blah. Anything is possible. Um, so this is the 
Power X uh, and MIDI out. Okay, it's a standard. Um, it, it it will have um, it will handle a standard five pole MIDI out cable, MIDI cable, but it has seven pole, which means the other two poles are used for phantom power. And we will make an adapter that will turn this phantom power into 9 volt DC with 500 milliampers. So this is what you get from this socket if you don't need the MIDI or you have MIDI uh, and then you have that uh, extra 9 volts in case you need that. This remote socket is similar to the one on the M1. It's a multi-purpose socket. There is um, it ho can handle our remotes, remote ones, and there will be a remote X one day. Um, it will also handle the MIDI one adapter for MIDI in, and it also handles a standard double foot switch, just like on M one. And on top of that, it could also be used for controllers and um, expression pedal to control mm -hmm. whatever yep. volume or wah wah or what you know any any of the parameters that you assign to the controller. This is the stereo lineout. The stereo lineout uh, can be used for wet dry wet systems. It gives you so many options. I, I'm not. Wet, dry, wet, dry, wet, uh, anything, anything. Okay, this is a send and return, which is after the amp section and before our internal effect section. So this send return uh, has a, a mono send because there's only one amp in amp X but it has a stereo effect section because it has stereo outs here, stereo headphone outs. And this um, effects loop, if you are missing something that we don't have uh, from your H9 or whatnot, you can plug this into these two, send and return. There is a controller in input that can be used for another controller. Um, depending on how many controllers you want. So you can actually have two controllers if you want two pedals. And um, yeah, it's, it's one of those uh, expression pedal inputs that can be assigned. To. Then there is the guitar input, of course. And the guitar input has now an internal switch for impedance switching. So there's our high impedance input of 2 mega ohms, but there's also in the input module, we can bring it down to, I think, 100 kilo ohms, something um, 100 kilo ohms at this point. I have to decide about the value. I thought it was good, but maybe it could be even stronger. Any nerds that give, give me value, put it in the comments. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's an easy one. Um, so these are um, the, the things, and hey, not to forget, um, this logo lights up, oh, we, we have to show you on this, yeah, it's not only printed, it's, it's kind of, it shines. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, if you have an MX, people will, can tell by the back panel logo. That's very important. Yeah, and we have the, the, the wing the, the wings um, option for it. So in case you want to have extra pedals, um, well, this one I can show you has um, this, this, these holes where, where you can mount pedals and then um, you can open this and uh, get the wings out, stuff like that, and have you don't need an extra pedal board. Well, you can still put it on a pedal board if you want a big uh, arsenal of extra pedals with it, but the idea of MX is to reduce. And um, 
Yeah. That was your original plan, right? With the amp one, you had your amp sounds, yeah. but your pedal board next to it. Yeah. And amp X takes that one step further because your amp and your pedal board is inside it. Yeah. So effectively, this amp exists to make your life easier. Oh, yeah. You I've raised the, the flat by mistake. That that can happen it's like, to a man. So yeah, this is yeah. like uh, Peter Sellers. We've all had that. You know. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. Th so this is part of the concept. But hey, we are creative people, and you can do whatever you like. Um, it's just when you design a product, you have some scenarios in your head. And from I'm, I'm my first customer myself, so I want to deal with this re Amp X replacing my big pedal board. And uh, so that's my personal aim. And then from there, I can go to the next level and, and try to get other people's pedal pedal boards in their uh, amp collection or pedal boards and this will take time but it will grow and we have finally the platform and I know what I'm doing the next 10 years because anything <laughs> I I own that I like I can slowly put in there some some things are not so hard and others are they will take a, a while you know and um we have people like Eugen Valuvierta, who already called and said, the bad boy must be in here. <laughs> I want my bad boy in here. And I said, yes. So we scheduled this for September, um, when the bad boy is available. Um, and yeah, and so I'm, and the good thing for myself is this is for me, this is, it's like a blank canvas. It, the amp itself, it's a blank canvas. It's my development. It's my whole thing. I don't need anything. I have. This is. I I have a. I have a few secret things that I can do somewhere, and do the modifications without any soldering iron in the unit. But I can also have a, a nice uh, desktop version that has a bit wider. Um, availability of parameters and um, and on the other hand it has more the overview is cooler for me um, but I tell you it's it's a monster <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at this point it's it is nearly killing us but the result will kill others. <laughs> that is what's going on. Yeah, we've talked about it a lot, but I'm sure a lot of the guys out there want to hear what the Ampex sounds like. Yeah. So may maybe we can... Let me see if I We get, can move to that. If I get the nano cap. Um, wait a minute. There's a nano cap. <laughs> some of the IRs from the blue box and there is um, a little thing um, we have a dynamic function I show you later on a clean sound but you see okay. there's there's a bunch of uh, these sounds from uh, yeah and more and more so what you're cycling through here is that's the different cabinet yeah. Options. Yeah. yeah. And then we can go through effects and I have like delay effects. I have um, uh, reverb effects. Then I, I kind of uh, recall what kind of effects I want. If I want to late or um, yeah, there's some modulation effects, room effects, blah, blah, blah. But um, a special slot there's all the drive thing, there's the, there's the VAR slot, this is the input. But this is, um, it's not finished yet, you know. Um, 
the navigation is in progress. Ah, and by the way, this is what you have to see here. Um, what's new is that we have the X controls that show when the reflex is a delay, it has a time, it has a feedback, it has a modula uh, modulation, uh, which was called the vintage factor, or maybe we call it vintage. Um, well, we can change the name as we like, you know. We could call this vintage and then have the level of the delay. Yeah. And let me show you another thing here. This is a Tweet Deluxe first model. And mm. there's my bias control of the amp that might end up as power drive or parts of power drive. Mm -hmm. But let me show you the effect. So this is... A <laughs> that sound and then I put it to half and then I put it to full So there is more than just gain with this control, you know. Gain sounds different. It's it's actually the bias that we are having here. So that's one thing and another thing here is some high gain. <laughs> I guess that's it for now. We have more to come at the show and of course on the social media channels, YouTube, uh, this is what we are doing right now, but we are also doing Facebook and Insta. We are, yes. And we do YouTube, we do everything. Yeah, we're everywhere, yeah. <laughs> so this, this was a very teasy-ish, tease, teasy-ish is not a word, but you, you teased them tonight, but there is going to be a lot more on all of our social media throughout the NAMM show and then of straight course. after as well. So yeah, like Thomas yeah. said, well, the Blue Guitar website, that's the most important place to go. Check yeah. out the Ampex product page, yeah. check out our YouTube, check out our Instagram, be subscribed and liking everything and you'll be the first to yeah. see stuff that, that happens. And there will be a lot of it happening in the next few days. Okay, yeah. See you all. Cheers. <laughs>